section R.7 is rational expressions. What does that word rational mean in math as opposed to what it means in psychology? Like a rational number, what does that mean? Exactly, you said the textbook definition, that's perfect. A rational number can, is a number that can be written as fractions. And we learned to deal with fractions, third, fourth grade. Um, unfortunately, in the third or fourth grade now, you're handed the calculator with a fraction button on it. And if you never learn to add and subtract fractions in third or fourth grade without that fraction button, then it gets really hard when you get an algebra and you're supposed to know how to add and subtract fractions, um, but your calculator won't let you pop the X's on there. So we've got to go back and just review some things from our basic math fractions. What about um, how we reduce fractions? If I just ask you to reduce the fraction, let's say 20 over 25, I'm going to you how you do that in basic math. You divide 25 and 20. If you wanted the decimal, you would say 20 divided by 25. Is that what you mean? Or yeah. you meant something different? Okay, that would change it to a decimal, but that's not how we would reduce a fraction and just leave the answer as a fraction. You are you find a... What's that word? Find a... No. I want the biggest number that will go into both numerator and denominator. What's that called? Uh, greatest common factor. factor. The same thing as when we're factoring polynomials. We look for the greatest common factor, which in this case would be 5, and then we would divide both the numerator and denominator by that. Now, the way you may have started out, I mean, now we can pretty much do that in our heads, but when we started out simplifying fractions in basic math, we would write both numerator and denominator in terms of a common factor. We would write the 20 as 5 times 4, and then we'd write the 25 as 5 times 5, and we would cancel the common factors. And we'd say 20 20 fifths reduces to 4 fifths. Tell me why what I just did is legal. Cancel those fives, but if I had taken this approach, it would be highly illegal. Why is it legal to cancel these fives and not legal to cancel those fives? Kind of hidden all around it. These two fives have stuff multiplied times them, which means that they are factors. That five is a factor, five times four and five times five. It's legal to cancel common factors. Five divided by five is just one. That's what you mean when you're canceling those fives. But in the second expression, those fives aren't factors, they are terms. Now, if you're writing this down, make sure you put a big old not equal to right here because that canceling was legal. Oh, excuse me, illegal. I've got your note in the notes that says you cannot cancel terms or parts of terms, and that's what these fives were. Terms have stuff added or subtracted. So you cannot cancel terms or parts of terms. You can only cancel factors. So the first thing you need to do on every rational fraction that you encounter in algebra is factor what will factor and then cancel your common factors. I have an example of highly illegal canceling done in algebra right here. Those twos are just screaming out, cancel me, cancel me. But the reason that you can't cancel those twos is this two is part of a term. It's multiplied by x, but then it has a 5 added to it. That makes it 
part of a term and you can't cancel those twos for the very same reasons that you can't cancel those fives. Illegal canceling is the most common mistake I see in R.7. Um, I'm, so, I'm so tired of writing highly illegal canceling on test papers that if you engage in that kind of canceling, then on your paper, you're going to get an HIC, which is not how many cars are on concrete blocks in your yard or how many dogs are under your porch. That's a different kind of hit. This is highly illegal canceling. So if you cancel terms or parts of terms, watch out for that. That's what you're going to get. If that's highly illegal, then how do we go about a legal manner of reducing number 16? Love to just cancel the x squares. Love to just cancel the x's, but those are terms. What do I have to do instead? You have to factor, and then you can cancel your common factors. So um, the numerator, you can factor out an x, and it leads you a 1 minus x. The denominator is the easy kind of trinomial. And since I know y'all spent all weekend becoming the very best factorers you can be, I'm going to do the factoring quickly today. And every time I factor, I'm going to stop and check my factoring because if I misfactor anything, it's going to totally change what would cancel. It's going to cause my answer to be wrong. Um, are 1 minus x and x minus 1 the same thing? I just cancel them and say that's 1. They're, they're not the same thing, but they do have a special relationship. They're not the same, but they're direct opposites of each other because here the x is negative, here the x is positive. Here the 1 is positive, here the 1 is negative. If you multiplied 1 minus x by negative 1, it would become x minus 1. So you can cancel them as long as you leave a negative 1. Just like in, in basic math, anything divided by its opposite, when you divide 5 by negative 5, you get negative 1. If you divide negative 10 by 10, you get negative 1. If you divide 1 minus x by x minus 1, you get negative 1. So all that's left of that fraction in the numerator, that's x times negative 1. You can either write negative 1x or you can just write negative x. And all that's left in the denominator is the x plus 2. And I am still dying to cancel those x's, but if you do, what's wrong with canceling that x in the denominator? <coughs> Oh, that's what would make that illegal. Um, it's, a it's a term rather than a factor. If that was 2 times x, you could absolutely cancel it. But it's x plus 2, and you cannot cancel terms or parts of terms. All right. Anything that I know you have seen before in your life, and it's just hard and you need more examples, I'm going to tell you where in the book you can find more examples. There's two more examples of simplifying fractions or reducing to lowest terms on page 63. What about multiplying and dividing? How do we do that in basic math? If we have, for example, um, three-fourths times, let's say, two-fifths, we do a multiplication problem in basic math. All right, there's two ways you can do it. Either one's okay. In my opinion, one's a little bit faster than the other. You could multiply straight across, and that would give you 6 twentieths, and then you could reduce the 6 twentieths, the same way we reduce this 20 or 25. But I think what you're suggesting is if I reduce before I multiply, then I don't have to reduce my fraction at the end. So you said crisscross. I'm thinking cross cancel the common factors. I'm saying two can go into this two one time. Two can go into that four two times. 
And then when we multiply straight across, we get 3 tenths, which is the same thing we would have gotten if we reduced the 6 twentieths. It would have reduced to 3 tenths. Whatever we do in basic math, we can do the same thing in algebra. It's just a little bit uglier. So what about this 24? Could you say 9 goes into both 27 and 18? Would that be legal? It's a true statement that 9 does go into both of those, but that 27 and 18 are terms. You can't cancel terms or parts of terms. So what do you have to do before you can cancel anything? Yeah, the answer is right up here. Factor completely before you do anything else. So in the numerator of the first fraction, I could factor out a three and that would leave me two X minus nine. In the denominator of the second fraction, I could factor out a two and that would leave me a two X minus nine. So just like I did in basic math, I can cross cancel those common factors, the whole two X minus nine. What about these two twos? Is it legal to cancel two factors that are in the same fraction? Isn't that what we did right here? Yeah, as long as one is in the numerator and one is in the denominator, then that's legal and that's how we have these twos. We can say two goes into two one time. So you can cross cancel or you can cancel within the same fraction as long as one of your factors is in the numerator and one is in the denominator. Then when I multiply straight across, all that's left is three times one is three and five X times all of that is one. Five X times one is five X. Now, it's a little bit more difficult to check your answers in R.7 than it was R.5. R.5 was all factoring, so all we had to do was every answer we got, multiply back together to make sure it gave us what we started with. It's not so easy here. You could do the problem twice and see if you get the same answer. If you do, it's probably right, but that doesn't guarantee it. Um, you could also take a number any mini money mo one plug one into that expression in the place of all the x's plug one in place of the x here and make sure all of that gives me the same thing as that does when i plug a one in it's still not foolproof so that's why i want you to be so careful and so obsessive about checking your factoring if you check your factoring and you have all it right all of it right, I know you can cancel out the right stuff. Check your factory. How do we do a division problem in basic math? Let's say we have um, nine tenths divided by um, two fifths. You multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. You change that to nine tenths times five halves. And then you work it just like we worked this one. You look for any cross uh, common factors, you can cross cancel. Here you could say five goes into five one time and five goes into 10 two times. When you multiply straight across, you get nine fourths. So that's the exact same thing we do in algebra when we have one fraction divided by another fraction. I'm just going to flip the second fraction, change the whole thing to multiplication. So I'll have 3 plus x over 3 minus x times, and then flip the second fraction, 9x cubed over just because I know what's coming next, I'm going to go ahead and factor that x squared minus 9. 
And so I don't have to rewrite the problem another time. That x squared minus 9 is x plus 3 times x minus 3. All right, so what do we have that we can cancel? Is, is 3 plus x the same thing as x plus 3, or is it like here, we're going to have to leave a negative 1? Are they the same or opposite? Three plus x and x plus three. Oh, those, are those are the same because it doesn't matter in what order you add numbers. Three plus seven is the same as seven plus three. So when you cancel those, you're just leaving a positive one. Can you leave this cancel this three minus x with that x minus three and leave a negative one? Yeah. Oh, but what? They're both in the denominator. If one was in the numerator, one was in the denominator, yes, you could cancel them and leave a negative one. But since they're both in the denominator, I'm going to have 9x cubed over 3 minus x times x minus 3. So I don't have anything else I can cancel. Hey, why can't I divide this x into that x cubed and leave it x squared? I'm trying to get you to say over and over, it's a term. You can't cancel terms. Hey, I think I've told y'all this before, but whenever I write or, I'm showing you a different way that you could write the answer. But as far as the test goes, it's absolutely fine with me if you leave this answer. I know, though, if you look in the back of the book, that's not how the answer is written in the back of the book. Tell me how they got this answer in the back of the book. Since these factors, well, since these factors are opposites, you could make one of them become the other, either by multiplying by negative one or factoring out a negative one. If you factor a negative one out of three minus x, it becomes x minus three. And then you can just choose to put that negative in the numerator rather than the denominator. You could also, actually, I think in the back of the book, they write the negative out front. Either one of those is okay. I don't write it out front because when you're typing, it's hard to show the space between the negative and this line. So I just put the negative in the numerator. Either one of those would be okay. But if you ever have an answer and the back of the book has a different answer, you need to figure out if your answer is wrong or if it's the same thing written a different way. And these two are the same thing written a different way. All right. That's all I want to say about simplifying, multiplying, and dividing rational expressions. We're up to adding and subtracting rational expressions. What makes adding and subtracting fractions harder than multiplying and dividing fractions? What do you have to have to add and subtract that you don't have to have to multiply and divide? Common denominator. We didn't have to have a common denominator to multiply these. We didn't have to have a common denominator to divide these. But when you add and subtract fractions, you have to have the same denominator. The denominator of a fraction tells you how many parts are in the whole when you say, um, I ate three-fourths of a pizza, you mean the pizza was cut into four pieces, and I ate three of them. So the reason we need a common denominator to add fractions is we need our slices to be the same size. If you say, oh, I only ate one piece of pizza, well, the pizza was only cut in two pieces, so you ate half of it, that's a lot of pizza. 
if your slices have to be cut in the same size before you can compare the pieces, that's why you have to have a common denominator to add and subtract. If you already do have the common denominator, let's say in basic math, if I was adding 7 twelfths plus 2 twelfths, how do I do that? Just add the numerator, keep the same denominator, and then at the end, check to see what? If it'll reduce, that will reduce. You can divide the numerator and denominator both by three, and that's three-fourths. So we need to do the same thing in algebra. Number 44, we're adding two fractions that already have the same denominator. But I want to tell you what the most common mistake is and how you can avoid that most common mistake. What's the most common mistake if I just ask you to subtract x plus 1 from 5x minus 4? Not distributing the negative completely. That's the most common mistake. It's in 1.3. And when we were talking about that in 1.3, I said take one step to distribute the negative completely and then combine like terms the same thing you need to watch out for here. The most common mistake is folks go 5x minus x is 4x, and then they accidentally go negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. If you want to make sure you avoid that, then anytime I'm subtracting a fraction, <coughs> I take one step to distribute that negative through either the numerator or the denominator. All I did was take that negative and multiply it by both terms in the numerator so that I would remember to distribute completely. So what should that numerator be instead of 4x minus 3? It should be what? 4x minus 5. Yep. I don't think you'll make that common mistake if you take one step to distribute the negative and then just add. That reminds me of something else though. If I have, and we may have talked about this before, um, if I have a negative in front of a fraction, negative one half, that's negative 0.5. Is that the same thing as if I put the negative in the numerator? Yeah, negative 1 divided by 2 is still negative 0.5. Is it okay if I, is it the same thing if I put the negative in the denominator? Punch on your calculator. 1 divided by negative 2. It's still negative 0.5. We don't normally leave an answer with a negative in the denominator, but all three of those things are the same. Is this one the same as the other three? No, that's positive 0.5. So if you're writing that down, make sure you have a big old not equal to there. These three are all negative 0.5, but that one's positive 1.5. Not 1.5, just 0.5. The moral to that story is, if you have a negative in front of a fraction, you can either put it in the numerator or you can put it in the denominator, but you can't put it in both. How does that help us subtract in number 46? Are those denominators the same? Is x minus one the same as one minus x? No. Is there a way you could make them the same? Negative one. You could either, that would work, you could either factor a negative one out of one of them, or you could just choose to distribute that negative rather than putting it in the numerator. You could just distribute it through the denominator. You can either put it in the numerator or the denominator, but not both. In number 44, we didn't need it in the denominator, so we distributed it through the numerator. But in number 46, putting it in the denominator, 
will help make those denominators the same. Just make sure you didn't put it in the numerator and have negative x over x minus 1. So what do you have when you add those two fractions? Plus six. Be careful with that, Luke. You said six x, which would be multiplied six plus x over x minus one. Would that be the same as x plus six over x minus one? Yeah. yeah, that would be the same. Would it be the same as x plus six over one minus x? No. There, I've made the denominator opposite. All right, so we know how to add fractions that have the same denominator. We know how to subtract fractions whose denominators are opposites. That's easy to fix. What if your denominators aren't anything alike at all? What if we're adding one half plus one fifth? How do we get a denominator, common denominator there. All right, if two and five don't have any common denom or don't have any common factor, then the LCD is just two times five. You just multiply. But if the two denominators do have a common factor, like 12 and let's say, um, 18. You may remember doing this in basic math, you may not, but we wrote the prime factorization of the 12 and the 18. We factored it until we couldn't factor any further. The 12 would factor into 2 times 2 times 3, and the 18 would factor into 2 times 3 times 3. And then how did we find the LCM using those prime factorizations? The most twos that either one has and the most threes that either one has. If one of them had a five, I'd have to put a five in the LCM. But the most twos that either one has is two twos. The most threes that either one has is two threes. So the LCM is two times two is four, times three is 12, times another three is 36. 36 is the smallest thing 12 and 18 will both go into. Notice I said LCD here and LCM here. They're almost the same, but that two and five are in the denominator. So the D stands for denominator, least common denominator. Really, I should have a D here as well, but I was thinking the least common multiple of 12 and 18 is 36. Technically, since I put them in the denominator, that should be a D. But I could say, what's the LCM of 12 and 18? And you'd still say 36. All right, so it seems like what you're telling me is in basic math, if our denominators don't have a common factor, I just multiply them. If my denominators do have a common factor, then I have to factor and I have to put in each factor to the highest power it occurs in either one of the factorizations. That's just a big fancy way of saying the most twos that either one has, the most threes that either one has. Let's see if we can copy that process in algebra. Fifty-six. This whole line here is find the least common multiple. Accidentally down here, I typed LCD instead of LCM, but I'm still looking for what both of these will go into. 
and I can't do it factor by factor. I can't, or term by term. I can't say x squared and x squared will both go into x squared. I can't say 12 and 16 will both go into 48. I have to factor both of those, just like I had to factor the 12 and the 18 here. They're both the easy kind of trinomial, so I'm going to factor them quickly. Looking at those two expressions in their factored form, tell me the LCM, the smallest thing both of them will go into evenly. Going to have to have an X minus 4. Now, if you stop right there, what you've given me is the GCF. You've given me what will go into them. And I don't want what will go into them. I want what both of them will go into. So not only an X minus 4, but also what? An X plus 3? Is that it? I have to have X minus 4 the most times it occurs in either factorization. So I have to have X minus 4 squared in the LCM. The highest power of my X minus 4s and the highest power of my x plus 3s. All right, number 62, I'm trying to find the LCM of three expressions. That last one's already in factor form, but that first one would factor into x plus 2 squared The second one I could factor out an x squared and it would leave me an x plus 2. And just so I don't forget about it, I'm going to bring down that third expression as well. What all has to go in the LCM? Definitely have to have an X squared because that's the highest power of my plane of Alexis. What else? X plus two squared. No, oh, the highest power of my X plus twos is X plus two cubed. So that's my LCM. There was actually something else I wanted to say about 56 and forgot. When I say that's my LCM, I'm saying there's something you can multiply times this first expression to make it become this. And there's something I can multiply times this to make it become this. If I was trying to make this be my common denominator, what would I have to multiply this by to make it become this? It would need another x minus 4. What would I have to multiply this by to make it become this? It would need the x plus 3. So when you write down the LCD, you can look at it and see what you would have to multiply times each of those expressions to make it become that. All right, one more. My made up example 3. The reason I made up number three is because I have people mistakenly tell me that LCM is P minus four. And I say, oh yeah, what do you multiply times P that makes it become P minus four? Occasionally somebody says negative four and I go P times negative four is P minus four. It's not. So what what goes in the LCM? Yeah. P times P minus 4. It's just like this 
one half and one fifth. We said if two and five don't have a common factor, then the LCD is just their product. You multiply two times five and get 10. Here, P and P minus four don't have a common factor. So the LCM is their product. Now we leave it in um, factored form so that we can look at each expression and say, what do you have to multiply times this to make it become that? And what do you have to multiply times this to make it become that? All right, we've done all but the hardest thing. And before we do the hardest thing, and as many examples as we can of it, let's remember this process in basic math. In basic math, how do I add two thirds plus three fourths if Hurricane Irma blows my fraction button away? First, you find the LCD. And for those two fractions, it would be what? 12. Because three and four don't have a common factor. You multiply them. The LCD is 12. All right. You're explaining how to add fractions to a fourth grader here. I found my common denominator. Now what? Multiply the three times four to get close to multiply the three times four. That makes sense to a fourth grader? Okay. I can handle that. Whatever you do to the denominator, you have to do the same thing to the numerator. Really, if I was that fourth grade teacher, I would say the only thing you can multiply times something that doesn't change it is what? Four. One. So the only thing I can multiply that two thirds by that doesn't change it is one, but I can write that one any way I want. I could write it seven over seven if I wanted to. I don't want to, but I could. I can multiply it by negative five over negative five if I wanted to. I can multiply by duck over duck if I wanted to. But the only thing that makes sense to multiply it by if I'm trying to get the denominator to be 12 is, is four over four. Now see, you've been doing this so long, you probably don't write down that step anymore. You just skip it and say three goes into 12, four times four times two is eight. But what you're really doing, and what fourth graders need to realize they're doing, is they're multiplying by one to get an equivalent fraction. Two thirds is the same thing as eight twelfths. What would you multiply that three fourths by? And not just three, but three. three over three, so that really you're just multiplying by one. Three fourths is the same thing as nine twelfths. Once you get that common denominator, add the numerator, keep the same denominator, and see if it'll reduce. This particular one won't reduce. But no matter how big and ugly the algebraic fractions are, it has these same three steps. A, multiply each fraction by whatever it needs to make its denominator become the LCD. B, write your equivalent fractions, and C, add those two fractions. If you can remember that's the three steps, then adding algebraic fractions is those same three steps. So, uh, someday I may take this off the bottom. I mean, for one thing, you have to have a magnifying glass to see it. Um, I just wanted, I was afraid I wouldn't have time. I would only have time to do one example. So I cut and pasted one other example from the book. I'm just OCD if I have blank space at the bottom of the paper, I have to fill it in with something. So let me talk about this one real quick and then we're gonna flip over and do the one on the back. First thing they did was factor both denominators to find the LCD. First denominator became X plus two, X plus one. Second one became x minus one, x plus one. So you tell me while I have it covered up, what all has to go in the LCD? x plus two, x minus one, and x plus one. The LCD is gonna have three factors, x plus two, x plus one, x minus one. Now what I don't like about the way the book did this problem 
is they take the first fraction and work on it right here, and they take the second fraction and work on it right here, and then hopefully remember at the end to put the two back together. I don't like to do that. It, it's a bad habit to take one part of a problem, work it over here, one part of the problem, work it over here, and hope you remember to put it back together at the end. So I came up with my own special miles steps. I don't like saying there's eight skip steps to something because that's too scary. I'm just going to say there are three steps. This is step A. This is step B. This is step C. Each step just has baby steps. Now, I can't make this big enough for you to see the problem and the words, but you need to follow along on the words on your own paper. These eight steps, or three steps with baby steps, will allow me to solve, or not solve, add or subtract any two rational expressions in the world. Step A, this is my step A right here where I'm doing it. The baby steps for part A are factor any denominator that will factor. The only one that would factor this x squared plus 5x, I could factor out an x. Leave a blank after each term. Let me tell you why we do that. In a minute, we're going to need to go back and multiply each term by one, just like we did in basic math. So I'm leaving a blank after each term so that I can multiply by one when I get ready. And the third baby step in step A is if one of the fractions is subtracted, distribute the negative completely through the numerator. So that you don't lose it, like I mentioned with a common mistake, where was it? Common mistake right there, not distributing the negative. The way we avoid that mistake is put it in the numerator. So I did that right here. This was minus 2 over x. I changed it to plus negative 2 over x. That's the end of step A. Step B, find the LCD. My denominators are x plus 5, x, and x times x plus 5. What's the LCD? x times x plus 5. And write it down for all three fractions, because I have to make all three fractions have that denominator before I can add them. The reason that I write it down three times is that helps me with step 5, which I'm going to zoom in so you can see better. But step five says, look at each original denominator and tell me what you have to multiply it by to make it become the LCD. What do you have to multiply the first denominator by to make it become the LCD? It just needs an X. So that first fraction, I'm going to multiply by X over X. Just like in basic math, I multiplied this first fraction by 4 over 4. And the second one by 3 over 3. It's the exact same process. Why do you have to multiply the second denominator by to make it become the LCD? It needs x plus 5. So I'm going to multiply that second fraction by x plus 5 over x plus 5. What do you have to multiply that third fraction by to make it become the LCD? 1. It already is, but since I left the blank, in ink, I'll just put 1 over 1. But if it were in pencil, I'd just erase it. That's the end. No, that's not the end. There's one more baby step in step B. Multiply to get your new numerators. In basic math, we have to say 2 times 4 is 8, and 3 times 3 is 9. That's the step we're on in algebra. Be careful when you're distributing. You've got to multiply that x by both terms. When you multiply a, binom a monomial times a binomial, make sure you distribute it completely. What will this first new numerator become? 5x plus 1x. What's 4x times x? 4x squared oh, okay. plus 1x. 
4x squared plus x. What does the second numerator become? And make sure you distribute completely. Negative 2x minus 10. What does the third denominator become? It just stays 10. That's the end of step B. We've multiplied to get our new numerators. Step C really is the easiest step. Add the numerators and keep the same denominator. What would I get if I combined like terms in the numerator? 4x squared. 4x squared. Minus x. Minus x. Anything else? Negative 10 plus 10 is 0. And then our last step is check to see if it will reduce. I'd hate for you to get this far and just cancel those x's. So this x is a term. What do I have to do rather than canceling those x's? I think I heard it whispered. Factor out an x. That leaves you a 4x minus 1. And now that x is a factor instead of a term, it's legal to cancel it. Adding rational expressions is one of the ugliest things we do in algebra. They, they can get a little bit uglier than that, but the steps are the same. No matter how ugly of two rational expressions I give you, these eight steps will let you add them. So I want you to practice writing your addition like this rather than on the example I copied from the book. I didn't want to take this and work on it in one place and this and work on it somewhere else. On my paper, every line is equivalent to the line above it. I can look at this line and make sure it's the same as that. I can look at this line and make sure it's the same as that. Now, I want to see how well you can apply that to number 70. Here's how I know folks are confused when they're adding rational expressions. And I'm sorry for being sexist here, but girls are worse at it than guys. I don't know why, it's just one of the things. I can tell you plenty of things guys are worse at, but girls, the more confused they get, the bigger their rotting gets. And then it's when you get really confused, it starts going sideways. And then at the point you're about to throw up, it looks like that. So I don't wanna see that, I wanna see this. All right, go for it on this number 70. Everybody do step A and then stop just a minute and let's make sure we're all okay on step A before we go to step B.
Here's your step eight. And everybody should look just like mine. And factor the only denominator that would factor. I left a blank after each term. I'll come back and fill in that blank in the next step. And very importantly, it'll keep me from making a sign mistake later. I changed that subtraction to addition by distributing the negatives through the numerator. Any questions about step eight? Do step B and then look up. We all agree on the LCD. We all agree on what each fraction needs to be multiplied by. There's one reason, one thing that makes this problem a little bit harder than the example that I did. In the example that I did, I only had to multiply a monomial times a binomial. I just had to make sure to distribute completely. In this one, I gave you what kind of multiplication do you need to do? This is a binomial times a binomial, so you need to do what? Right. Go ahead and do that and get your new numerators. have the same numerators or does anybody need to ask me anything Minus 5x. Where did I get minus 5x? Right here, Luke, you have minus 7x plus 2x. And I just went ahead and combined so I didn't have to write the whole thing down again. 
Any other questions about those numerators? What did you get when you combine like terms? X squared minus 6X, and then what? Plus 11, that's right. You always need to see if it will reduce, but the only way that will reduce is if you can factor that numerator. Are there factors of 11 that have a sum of six? Nope, so that's the answer. All right, that's the hardest thing we have to do tonight. We're gonna to do one more. I'm gonna make up one. And when you get it right, you can go. You might have a bonus 10 minutes today. That means I get to talk 10 minutes late one day when I'm feeling off. All right, I'm just gonna make this up. Oh, wait, is that about to get way half? No, 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 it's okay. I thought I'd made up something really difficult, but I didn't.
And you, when you have it, wave at me and I'll come see you. When you get it back, you can go.
Well, there's something else. But here, when we distribute the negative through the numerator, it changed that to addition. Okay. So we're saying 5x squared plus negative 1x squared. Yep. Yes, that's right. The rest of it's right. Oh, okay. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. So you just need to be careful with your signs. It's about the process. You to be careful with your signs. You don't have to. All right, good job. Thank you. Did it work? Yes, it worked. Oh, you don't have to make a phone call. Yay! Good, good, good. I was still there. Do you want to stop that? Videos on my computer today. So, like, I brought it, but I'm still being kind of like, I don't remember doing it. Okay. Um, just wanted to watch this class. It'll be on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. If you want to see other examples, you can Google whatever the day's lesson is. Okay. Adding rational expressions, we'll get 40 billion okay. other videos. <laughs> but does, do you yeah, see how, sense. like, oh, this is what we do in yeah. basic math. This is the same thing that I did. Yeah. Okay. All right. That will be on YouTube in about. Um, school you're going to. <laughs> Unless you're going to the school whose teacher can't teach math. That there is one in the school like, that did that, like this old school that I did, that's why I'm in school because oh, they didn't teach me anything. I was so far behind. Oh, everything. that makes me so sad. That yeah. that gets you behind for the rest of your academic oh, career. Me, I'm like so far behind because yeah. and that's my whole life. I was in like a private school, so they didn't so I hear scary not, things yeah. it was about awful. some of them. I think yeah, there are good ones. Hill, they were like, this should be reviewed. And I was like, it's not. <laughs> that was oh, bless your heart. Yeah. Did you have Kim Nelson at, at Pleasant Hill? Seventh, eighth grade? I was in eighth grade, but no. Oh, okay. She's my best friend. She's, I love her. she's wonderful. Thanks. See you. Bye.